has Pepe's been serving the LA area? Oh man, um, my grandpa started the business, I want to say in 78. So before I was even a thought, you know, we've been at it for over 40 years. Wow. Obviously started with my grandpa, then my father and uncle, and then uh, I'm third generation. The names of your rotators, Hulk, how, how did you come up with that name? Oh, that's, uh, it's funny you say that because we never had nicknames uh, for the trucks. It started with Big Flipper, the 75 ton. Uh, it's, it's an old inside joke, a joke my dad used to tell, and it was the only 75 ton in the city of Los Angeles. I think it still is right now. I know Van Lingen has one out in Torrance and then 10 West up uh, up north. But it's just, uh, it's, it's big and it flips things, you know, so Big Flipper. So then when my truck came, the 50 ton, and the Hulk has always been my favorite since I was a kid. He's always been my favorite comic book character, so... I figured, you know, I'm going to do some pretty crazy things with this truck. I'm going to push it to its limits like Hulk, you know, and so far I haven't had a task with my truck so far that I haven't been able to handle it. Anybody who watches your YouTube channel um, knows that you love synthetics. You use them all the time. In fact, we tell customers that are questioning it, go watch your channel. Um, you have probably got the most amount of hands on hours with our synthetics simply because of the sheer volume that you use them on. I'm fortunate enough to where my truck can exclusively be used for recoveries, rollovers and heavy lifts. I don't do much of the towing side. So I get to use uh, my rigging a ton. And what the volume I do is just, I'm not a small guy, but chain gets annoying especially with the five eighths and the above you know the three quarter inch climbing up and down the ladders you know throwing them over containers and trailers and stuff i started to use them more and more the synthetic stuff and um it's stuck it's just i've, I've had great success with it the key is though obviously to protect it because they're not invincible I've learned the hard way myself. <laughs> Proper rigging um, is very important. Any equipment, even chain, will fail if it is not rigged properly. I've so, seen it. Yeah, it has. So they do take a little more thought, precaution. How have they actually held up to what you have put them through? It's funny you say that because as a big proponent of synthetic rigging, my father, who taught me everything I know and is, you know, the owner of the company, it took him a couple of years to even get him on board because... When you grow up, a lot of towers in the industry, it's not something you go to school for. You're usually, you know, in it at a young age and you just, towers have been in it forever. I know a lot of towers that have been in it for 20, 30 years and that's what they had back then and that's what they continue to use. So it's hard to break that habit, you know, to tell someone, hey, you've been doing this for 30 years. This is the new way to do it. So, and they see, you know, it's a, to them, it's, it's a rope, you know, that rope's going to rip. Not knowing that a lot of times is rope is double the working load limit of chain. So I'm a big guy. My dad's a numbers guy too. So the numbers work. You know, you use appropriate some piece of synthetic rigging for, for the casualty that you're doing. The numbers work. You protect it. It works well. Um, for me, it's just been a lot of uh, see as you do. People have been seeing that I'm doing it with the, the rigging I'm doing it. So that kind of gives them more like, okay, it works. And I've seen a lot of tours in my area, and I'll thanks to you guys too, you know, like, oh, I want the slings that Hulk has, that Josh uses. And I've been seeing the container slings in a handful of local companies, and it makes me happy that, you know, they're, they're starting to use it, testing it out, and they're having great success. Now, there is a package that's on our website now that is called the Hulk, and those are items that you have specifically um, picked out that you use the most. It includes one synthetic equalizing sling, it's three-quarter by 10 foot, two of the Bailey slings, they are seven eighths inch by six foot, four grommet slings, two that are half inch by eight foot, and two that are half inch by 10 foot, four ballistic nylon Velcro covers, and a large bag to keep them all in. Uh, for anyone interested, you know, in the whole kit or anything that I use on my, uh, my videos, your first thought is probably going to be like, you know, I've never really messed with the whole synthetic side and, you know, it's going to rip. A chain is, is a chain, you know, I can hit it on the table, listen to that sound. It's hard, but I've seen chain break, you know, and 
synthetics, I think, is the future. So people my age and stuff getting into the towing, you know, they're going to be more into the stuff than the old school legends. You know, the the guys that used to do rec. I used to do that with the home 750 and more power to you. That's awesome. You guys are pioneers, but this is a future. I kind of say it's akin to like, you know, when people say, well, I used to do it this way back in the day. Okay, well, they used to start fires with sticks and stones. Do you still start fires like that or do you have a lighter? Every operator in our industry has their particular method. And when you're using these slings to roll over a container, you tend to use them as the catch strap. So use a container link with an eight foot key flex on the, on the bottom side. And then the Bailey sling is your catch strap. What about that method works for you? You know, I got that method from Van Lingen. Uh, Sean over there is a great guy, huge numbers guy, really uh, got me a lot into like the whole safe working low limit and not using chain and container pockets for a multitude of reasons. And I tried it once and it, it's just, it's amazing because when you pull from the bottom pocket like that and you hug the container, it helps plant the container. The other method is you either back up a truck on each end or you put your boom, you know, perpendicular to the end and then you go to the holes, you bring it over like diagonal. That method doesn't work too well. Uh, if you think about it, visualize like the container right here and you have a diagonal. Well, when it comes over, if there's a load shift, if you don't have the catch right here, there's nothing really to stop it from going over that way. So by going to the two top pockets with the key flex and the container sling, you have an insane amount of control. And because they're containers, they're, they're prone to load shift a lot. So you're already rigged to the top holes. It's easy from there to counter lean it as you see in a lot of my videos, you put more tension on one side, let out on the other, flip that bad boy 45 degrees the other way. Um, and it's safe because you're, you, you have full control by going to the top pockets on each end. It's impossible to fall over. You're in full control the whole time. You use them on everything, just not containers. What have you used that Bailey sling on? Containers obviously is the number one thing. Um, I use them too now. The six foot length is perfect for a variety of things. Like let's say you're doing a tractor decking or undecking, you will put them in the pull pins and then attach them to a shackle. Uh, another thing too is spreader bars. Cause I think the perfect spreader bar length uh, per the Miller website, like if you have a Miller truck is five, six feet. Uh, you could use that. You know, they got a 16,000 plus working low limit and a vertical. So I use them for that. I use them for um, car fishing, my famous car fishing ex expeditions. I do a ton of equipment lifts, whether it's forklifts, genies, um, presses, machines, bales. I use the container slings for that. Another method um, that we see you use a lot is using the equalizing sling as a floating snatch box method. It, a lot of time on the front of a rig that has been uh, that needs to be recovered. What do you like about that method? Credit also to Sean Van Lingen. He he taught me that method as well, and I've been using it exclusively uh, with great success. I like that method because um, especially when you're working with like a newer rookie driver, you have to position the heavy wrecker at an offset angle in front of the casualty, right? And normally you spike it. That's still the go-to method for a lot of people. That method can put a lot of stress. In fact, I just heard this week there was a rollover from, um, I won't say the company, but they're local and they tweaked the frame on a tractor doing that method because they were going in too much on the, on the pull line, spiking the front of the tractor and the container wasn't coming over, so they they destroyed, they, they damaged the tractor. And they got in trouble for that. So the floating snatch block method, it just eliminates all that. You don't, there's no guesswork. You just kind of float it up a little bit and let the container do the magic. As it rolls over, it's gonna wanna pivot the, the tractor that it's in the sling. It's gonna wanna roll within the snatch block, you know, and follow the container, as opposed to the guy doing the spiking has to like monitor, okay, he's containers coming over, let me go in, 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 in. There's no additional damage to the track to that way. And I think it's a lot safer. A sling, um, it is not just used on containers. Like we mentioned, um, a lot of times you use that to pull the entire rig over out of the way um, where most people would want to pull out their conventional rigging because they're unsure of that synthetic being able to handle those situations. Um, have you seen any problems there? No, I have not. And I feel a lot more comfortable using my ways because uh, half inch chain is what most people use. A lot of towers um, aren't really 
up to date, like on their numbers when it comes to that. Like if you ask someone like, hey, what's that chain rated for? They won't really know. Well, half in chain, I think is around, depending on which brand you use and grade, it's going to be 12.5 or 15,000. Uh, well, when you're doing a lot of pulling and winching, it's not just the weight of the unit you're pulling. You have factors, resistance factors that amplify that force on that chain. That's why they're, they're so prone to break. And every time you stress it out, it gets weaker and weaker and weaker. Well, the synthetic stuff I use, I mean, it holds its working low limit pretty much at, at any angle. And like I said, with the protector, you, you got the full working low limit at, at any given time constantly. And it's lightweight. That's I don't think I mentioned that yet, but one of the best things, I'll have like three container sinks here and two eight foot straps here on this thing. And I'm just like walking around <laughs> with the whole container worth of rigging. So you're actually having to go to the gym now to lift weights. You're not doing it on a daily basis. Well, my car fishing jobs help with the gym. I get a lot of cardio on those. Um, so we've talked a lot of the slings that Bailey's offers, um, but we offer a full line of synthetics. So you've done a really cool recovery job um, with a 150 foot extension. And it was an F-150, if I'm not mistaken. Um, oh, I yes. have not wanted to pull the rigging up that hill that you climbed. We're in LA, right? So people don't really associate mountains and stuff with LA, but we have a lot of hills and canyons and mountain sides. There's Angeles Forest Highway. Then you have like the Malibu area. We get a lot of vehicles that go hundreds of feet over the side and winch outs in very precarious spots that you can't fit a big wrecker in. That job you're talking about is one of them. Um, I could barely fit our 60 ton, 16 ton wrecker in there. And the way the truck was leaning over the side, I wanted to do a horizontal pull to pull it up while also winching it forward. And I do not think I could have done that with chain or regular rigging. It just, it, I would have had eight 15 footers and would have been a lot of snatch blocks and a lot of um coupling. I got the 150 foot sling specifically for the car jobs because the rotators have 250 feet. And instead of using regular choker cable, that's anywhere from 50 to 100 and 150 feet. That's wire, that's steel, heavy. I know I used to do it before, horrible. Um, so I got the idea, why not just rig up to the strongest point I could find a, a strong tree up there, run the line down there and then use the access to go back to the front and pull the, the F-150 towards me. It worked great. Uh, the only difficult part about that was carrying the snatch block up there because they're extreme angles, but the rope itself worked absolutely wonderful. I use it on almost all my car jobs now. So you talked about the fact that you use the medium duty in that job, um, but on your heavy duty, you have our synthetic tieback slings. What do you like about those? I have them on every rotator, yes. Um, not only do they look cool, but it's a great way, especially if you have like say auxiliary lines, you can do so many, it's a, how do you call it? Like the way you dress up the back of your truck, you can either put your snatch box, cause I run snatch box permanently on Hulk. So it's a great way to keep the snatch blocks from, you know, going back and hitting the back of your truck. And I don't like putting the snatch block directly to the D ring on your tailboard. So what I do is I put the tie back sling through that D ring on the back, back up to my auxiliary lines, and it just keeps them nice and tight, really clean. So when I get a rollover or something and I'm ready for action, you just let out on one of the cables, unhook it from one end and now all your cables are free. You, you are a paying customer. Um, you have referred customers to us. Um, have those customers you have referred us or referred to us been satisfied? Oh, absolutely. Um, to name drop a couple of buddies of mine, I got, you know, local people. There's Titan Tow. There's a uh, City Terrace Tow. I see them use the containers things now, too, on their rollovers. It looks great. I'm sure they're happy with it. There's a lot of towers I've been seeing, uh, you know, texting me like, hey, what are those those blue things you use, those slings? And I like answering questions, you know, giving them reassurance and then they buy them, they buy a set and they tell me like, dude, this is awesome. They'll, they'll be sending me pictures of their first job with them. And it helps that uh, Thad and I communicate a lot. I'll give them feedback like, hey, I need to, you guys have a really, really good, um, what do you call it? A customer service where if I don't like something or if I want a slight tweak, it gets done, it gets sent to me because I'm the test dummy. You know, you guys know I'm going to use it. I have a, a piece of synthetic rigging for every job. Um, most of our customers, when they start using our synthetics, have that one recovery job where they are sold. Um, they realize that 
for themselves, it will actually hold up. This urethane is different. It's not like all the other slings that are out there. Do you remember what that moment was for you? Oh man, yes. Besides the heavy stuff, like a fully loaded 10 yard mixer that I brought up with my 15 foot slings. I, I wanna say that train one that made the cover of American Toman, that a train came off the front of the tracks and they had to get it back on the tracks and they were far apart from it. Uh, they had their great 10 chain on it. They weren't really doing much. So I, I went in big flip for the 75 ton and I used my two dual 15 foot um, container slings rated at like 52,000 in a basket each. And it pulled, I know a lot of it had to do with the strength of the 75 ton off the back, but using just those two pieces on my truck and that's it. Uh, I was, I was impressed. I was like, okay, this is ridiculous. They're stupid lightweight. I had them each on each shoulder. You just rig them up in a basket, apply my shackles on each end, throw them on the snatch block and start going in. And then when you put it away, it's easy. You just, you fold it double and you have it in your hand and it goes right there in your box. So just that, that a piece of equipment that that's easy to grab out, set up and everything can, can handle over a hundred thousand pounds like that. Good morning, everybody. We are here at LAX doing uh, some cargo loaders. Well, actually, it's just one. I've done about eight of these in the past week alone. I decided to record this one. It's pretty routine for me. I don't record them all. But this one I do because I want to showcase the synthetics that I'm using. Now that Bailey's has their, um, it's called a Hulk kit. I'll put it right now along with the interview. That's going to precede this just so you guys can see the real life applications on these cool new pieces of synthetic equipment. Now this bad boy with all the equipment on it weighs about 64,000 pounds. They're called cargo loaders. What they do is these are the things that walk up to the uh, walk up, drive up to the airplanes and this platform will rise like very, very high. That's how they get the cargo on and off. I'm also going to be throwing on my load cell so you guys can see. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, I'm going to be throwing on my load cell so you guys can see how insane it is. You know, the, the weight distribution, the front compared to the back, and also why it's important, you know, to do things like make sure you follow your safe working load limits, uh, the due to the 50% ratio on a four part pick. And I'll explain all that a little bit later as soon as they give us the okay to drop this and I can get into position. Alright, since I've been doing these a lot frequently, I already know more or less where the lift points are on the different models. And Hulk's going to be lifting up every bit of about 60,000 pounds off the side, which is real heavy. And this is all the equipment I'm going to use. That's it. These two 8 foot grommet slings that come in the whole kit actually. These are rated at 33,000 pounds each in a basket. And I have those little nylon protectors, those Cordoba protectors. So when you're hugging like an edge or a frame, it doesn't cut through the strap itself. They're very tough resistant. I can zoom in on here. I've, I've used these like, like I said, I did about eight of these. And they held, held up incredibly well. Decided to show you guys how it looks. All right, so unfortunately I got a lot of standby time like always. Hurry up and wait, but in the meantime, I'm prepped. This is how easy it is with this stuff. That's that eight foot sling I was showing you. And if you see this sign right here, these are the designated lift points. Now, so hopefully you'll be able to see uh, how thin it is in there. It'd be pretty difficult with chain. It's easy to maneuver the synthetic stuff. Now what I did is I have old fire hose protectors. Uh, I mean old fire hoses. What I do is I cut them up in different lengths and they're perfect on stuff like this. So when you're touching up here against the frame with like 30,000 pounds of force on one line, it can cut into the rope. They're not indestructible. But that's pretty much free at any fire department. Or if you see up top what I have also, is the Cordova covers that come in the kit. Whoops, that one up there. I use those too. 
just for me these are these are pretty convenient as the fire hose protectors and then on the back this is where this stuff really shines let me uh show you also right here well you know what on the other side you see the actual uh lift point sign but right here is the designated lift point for this thing see if you can see it down in there really really difficult to get your chain in there not only that but a lot of brokers and companies they like this one specifically does not want chain because it'll scratch this same thing with up there It'd be kind of a hassle to jump up there hold it feed it through and even then your half inch chain and even your 5h chain will be overloaded by quite a bit let me just show you what Hulks looks like. This is what even the big boy half inch, I mean 5 8 chain is rated at. Let me show you. Now, you see right there at the very top, 22,600 pounds working low limit and that's in a vertical. You don't get a true basket configuration with chain like most people think. So if I'm lifting over 30, 31,000 pounds on each line at any given time, you're overloading that chain by almost half. Half of 22,000 is 11,000. And if I'm seeing 31,000 pounds of force on this, I mean, the math is simple. The beauty about those ropes is they hold their working load limit incredibly well. Can't wait to show you guys what it looks like in action. Still waiting to confirm where they want this bad boy dropped. Alright, it's finally game time. So, now that we're both in position, Carlos is going to be lifting the rear using the half inch grommet slings and I'm going to be doing the front with the 5 8 And I got both load cells. I have two load cells. I got a new one from Crosby. It's a wireless load shack, which is pretty cool. So that way I'll be able to tell how much each line is lifting. It's not like a, a scale weight, but it measures the force that my lines are feeling. Uh, should be okay for now. Let's jump up there. Perfect, okay, as you can see, I got everything done. Grommet seems attached. I put an extra pad protector right there for the edge so it doesn't cut into my strap as I put all the tension on it. Let's zoom out. And then right here's my load cells. So they're registering nothing right now. Let's put some tension on it and see what it does. Alright, one, two, Let's see what my load cells are reading now that I'm almost airborne. About 15.7 and then 17.1. Okay, Carlos, start going in with your lines a little bit. Good, hold it. Good job, Hulk. I'm fully airborne. Go in until you're airborne, Carlos. Now I'm at 16,000 on one line and 23 on the other. You see how difficult it is to have 100% even tension? Are you are you fully airborne? Get fully airborne, please. Keep going. Tighten up on, on this side, though, to make sure it's even. Good. By the way, look how stable Hulk is, man. Very impressed with this 50 ton. At this far extension, Hulk is lifting up. How many pounds of force now? 
17,300 and 22,000 on one side. Not a chain in sight. Okay, now what we're gonna do is at the same time, let's let out with our cables until we're almost over the ground. Watch out for the outrigger, so. That's fine, start letting out. Okay, hold it there. Let's stand on this side. So we can get it away from the curb. <clears throat> Start letting out, Carlos. Good. Now hold it. Alright, now go on with your green cable to get it away from the curb. Green. While you let out with the red. And with the green. You see? You're pulling it away. Keep going in, keep going in. Excellent. Look at that, perfect. Okay, hold it there while I catch up. Alright, now as I let out with this side, Carlos can help me. Hold it, Carlos. Okay, now what you're gonna do is tuck in with the, go in with the red now. It went out too far. Go in with the red while you let out with the green. So you can, exactly. Keep going. Now hold it there. I gotta bring the front end away. All right, sorry about that. I had to walk around. But this is the end result. Perfect. Had to get it away from the curb, so we had to play with the cables, but threw in an extra piece here just to protect it from the frame so it doesn't cut into it. And presto. Very easy. <laughs> 